as consumers, if we're purchasing food, often we're buying something containing sugar. The sugarcane industry is enormous and Australia is considered a world leader. It's also an industry that supports many Queensland coastal towns and communities. Oh, and driving through the region, it's sugarcane as far as the eye can see. Do Australians consume this much sugar? Uh, no, yeah, we're predominantly an export industry, so 85% of the sugar produced in Australia is exported. In my region, in the Burdekin, which is the largest sugar growing region, 100% uh, of it is exported. And of the total Australian crop, 95% of it is grown in Queensland. Runoff from all forms of farming and coastal communities drains to the Great Barrier Reef Lagoon. This can negatively impact corals and seagrasses by increasing sediment and nutrients and introducing pesticides, which over the years has caused harm. But the sugarcane industry is responding. Yeah, the industry has been in the spotlight, but that's because we're the largest uh, coastal agricultural industry and we have a lot of pressure on us and we know we have to do the right thing. And so therefore we have processes and practices to, to reduce the amount of uh, fertiliser and, and pesticides we use and also the timing and application of those. And that all gets tied into our program, which is the Smart Cane BMP program. What is Smart Cane BMP? OK, so Smart Cane BMP is a best management program that is available to all cane farmers right across Queensland. There's three main parts of the accreditation process. They are soil health and nutrition, irrigation and drainage, and weeds and pests and diseases. Oh, I've found it to be a, a useful process and I think it's interesting. You learn things about your farm that you, you didn't necessarily know. Jamie Dawes' farm is in the wet tropics at Tully, between Cairns and Townsville. He's a fourth generation sugarcane farmer. You've got a long history in the region and with cane, haven't you? Um, I'm a fourth generation farmer in this region. All my family are pioneers uh, in the industry. We're very proud of that fact and I've been doing that um, all my life. There's so much activity, Jamie. What's going on today? Yeah, it's all happening. The season started. So at the moment, the mill's going full steam ahead. Crushing's happening, harvesting's happening. We just finished planting, we're fertilising, we're spraying. You must have seen a lot of changes to farming over this time. Uh, immense changes, really. We've gone from uh, you know, ploughing all of the fields to now just using control traffic. So we only till the areas that we need to till. We use uh, rate controllers in spraying that meter out chemical very efficiently. It's good for our bottom line and it's also very good for the environment. So there's a lot more precision to the way you farm. Yeah, absolutely. And also a lot more data collection. Nowadays, all of the technology, um, the tractors and the rovers will have data logging capabilities, a uh, GPS unit, and they basically log all that information for us and uh, put them on a cloud-based server. And we use that for our compliance and BMP accreditation. And we actually do very detailed nutrient management plans and they automatically put out that right rate. So the other big change has been in drainage and managing water. The whole of this catchment has put a lot of work into catchment design and having reserves and wetlands that actually filter out all of the, um, any of the agricultural runoff that may happen. You've been through the Smart Cane BMP accreditation. What did you get out of it? We've got better nutrient management planning, better drainage and, and retention, water quality retention outcomes, and also better use of pesticides and chemicals. Having all of our equipment on GPS has reduced compaction greatly. So we've got an area that we traffic and an area that we farm. And through doing this, we don't compact that area that we're farming and it greatly improves soil health and it greatly improves efficiency on the property. We don't do any burning, so we use green cane harvesting. That reduces sediment runoff. It acts like a big sponge, retains moisture and it fixes the fertiliser right where it needs to be. So wetlands, they're like lungs, I suppose, and they filter all of that sediment, um, chemical or fertiliser that may run off in, a, in an episodic event and keep it out of the actual catchment region. Coming up next on Planet Shapers, Australia grows the cleanest, greenest cane sugar in the world. But how do Australian cane growers receive a fair price on the world market? Blockchain technology will be able to map 
the whole supply chain right through to the end user. Global buyer trends are demanding farmers prove they are adopting greener farming practices. I've heard of blockchain. How does it work for sugar traceability? Blockchain technology um, will be able to map the whole supply chain right through to the end user. And that's the key part of the, the blockchain, is that each section is independently uh, checked. So the end user then has sustainable sugar that ticks off all the traceability steps all the way through. So it's all about proving where the sugar came from. We've got the cleanest commodity out there and the end user should be able to see all the way through the supply chain that we're accredited, right down to the farm level. See where that sugar comes from and our environmental practices second to none. The spotlight is on Australia to demonstrate how they're protecting the Great Barrier Reef and how community and the sugar industry are working together for change. We want our product to be completely sustainable. So not just about water quality, we want to be carbon neutral. It's a very important industry to the coastal towns of, of Queensland. It's fundamentally important that we can prove that we are doing a, a good job environmentally. Yeah, we're looking at being able to offset all of our environmental impact eventually. How important is it for cane farmers to be involved? Oh, we feel it's very important. Most of the growers are really compliant. They just need to formalise that. A lot of it's about record keeping and demonstrating what they're already doing anyway. If it's best for the environment, it's also best for the farmers and for the local communities going ahead. I think I'm representative of a lot of growers my age. We think that we're living in a pretty exciting time, really.